Hi, my name is Daniel. Today I'll show you how to migrate to an Exadata DB system. And as a bonus, I'll show you how to convert from single instance to rack. In this video, I already installed the ZDM service host. I've also created an object storage bucket. For details on how to do that, visit my blog. There's a link at the end of the video. Now let's have a look at the source database. The database is called CDB1, and since I'm querying GB$ instance and there's only one row returned, I can tell it's a single instance. I can see that from the cluster database parameter as well. Next, I'll prepare the target database. I have to create a placeholder database on my Exadata. ZDM will eventually replace it with a standby of my source database. When creating the placeholder database, I also choose the future architecture of my database. If I create the placeholder database as a rack database, ZDM will see that and make all the necessary changes there is to convert from single instance into rack. And that's all there is to it. Let me show you how to create the placeholder database. You can see it's an Exadata DB system. The database name must match DB name of my source database. Release must match my source and I choose a proper database home. It should be on the same patch level or newer. The password must match the sys password of the source database. And that's it, create the database. Once the database is created, I can create a response file. Migration method is set to ggoss, which specifies a data guard to OCI. I have to specify the target DB unique name. And since I'm using ASM, I can just specify the disk groups. For this type of migration, I'll just leave backup path empty. Getting the host parameter correctly might be a little tricky, but visit my blog for further explanation. Note, the latter part of the URL is the object storage namespace. Let me quickly show you how you can find that. On the OCI webpage, click on your profile and then your tenancy. You'll find the object storage namespace in the bottom. Now back in my response file, I specify the name of an object storage bucket. It holds the backup of the database that is used later on for the initial restore of the target database. And finally, I choose not to configure fallback and just shut down the source database after the switchover. I can now use ZDM CLI to start the migration. First, I'll use the eval option to perform a sanity check of my settings. Nothing is changed during the evaluation. I've specified my response file and details about the source environment. I'll connect to the source via SSH as the user OPC and use this key file. These are the details about the target environment. When target is a rack database, ZDM needs to connect to only one of the nodes in the cluster. Again, I'll connect this OPC to the target environment and use this key file. The backup user should be set to the username of my OCI account. Now let's give it a try. First, I enter the sys password. When prompted for the OCI password, be aware that since I'm targeting an object storage bucket, I must specify an auth token, not my password. My migration job is now created, and I can use the ID to monitor it. After a while, the evaluation is done. Status is succeeded, and all steps are marked as completed, meaning the evaluation passed. I can now safely proceed with the actual migration, and I'll do that in two steps. First, I'll build a standby database in OCI and just let it sit there while I wait for the switchover to take place. Second, at my will, I will complete the migration and perform the switchover. If you have a properly configured application, there won't be any downtime at all, just a small brownout while the switchover takes place. If you don't have such an application, you will need to shut it down perform the switchover and then restart the application. In any case, such a switchover should be doable within a few minutes. Now let's get on with it. I'm reusing the setdm CLI command from the evaluation, but I've removed the eval option. Instead, I've added a pause after option 
and configure it to stop the migration right after the standby has been built in OCI. Enter the password and auth token, get a cup of coffee and wait. You can use the set the MCLI query command to monitor the progress. Eventually, when the standby has been built, the migration will pause, right before the switchover. I will verify the data guide setup by querying the primary and standby database. The upper window is my on-premises database, the source environment. The lower window is my OCI database, the target exadata. As you can see, the primary database is open on SRC host, my source environment. And I have a physical standby on my target exadata. And the changes are getting applied on the standby. Before completing the migration, let me mention something really cool. When the standby database has been built in OCI, you can convert it into a snapshot standby and use it for testing. In other words, you can perform testing on your production data on your future production system. When you're done testing, simply convert the snapshot standby back into a physical standby and you can complete the migration. I believe this is a really useful feature. But for now, I'm just going to complete the migration. To move on, I'm using the resume command. It'll pick up from where it left. Since we stopped right before the switchover, this is where it will start. After a few minutes, the switchover has completed and the migration is done. Welcome to OCI. But let's just verify that. I'm logged on to the OCI database and as you can see, it's now the primary database and opened in read-write mode. I just showed you how easy you can migrate to the most awesome database platform, the Exadata. Thanks for watching and happy migrating.